So the Jensen J10 ASB is a pretty popular little sub-amp combo from Walmart that I've actually reviewed, and we actually really like it here. It's a pretty decent little subwoofer, although you guys have pointed out to me, as well as I've experienced it for myself, and that is that that little thing gets like flipping hot. Like honestly, if you had one of these and you went out to your vehicle and you actually ran your subwoofer for about 30 minutes and touch it on the panel right around where the gain control is, you would probably think that something is wrong. Well, there's something more to that. And I also have a way that we can actually fix that. Stay with us because we're going to actually go ahead and run some real world tests. Look at the amplifier components to maybe try to get a better understanding of the amplifier itself. And I'm going to show you a very cheap and easy way to actually fix the problem and keep your J10 ASB or dual TBX10A. They're the same thing. Just as cool as the other side of the pillow or a, as a cucumber. So the first test we did with the Actron digital thermometer was actually of the J10 ASB as it was sitting idle, not turned on. Uh, it was in a hot car and it turned out to be about 73.4 degrees Fahrenheit, I believe. And then after only about 10 minutes of running the vehicle and playing the subwoofer at a pretty decent volume, it jumped up to 128.8 degrees. That's pretty hot, you would think but it's actually kind of not in the same aspect. We'll get more into that here in a second. When I really noticed it was when I drove for about 45 minutes and then actually, I think I was doing something and I just happened to graze it with my finger and I could tell it was very, very hot. What we're gonna do is we're gonna actually go and take a pretty long ride and kind of beat on it for a little bit, probably about a half an hour, 40 minutes. Then we're gonna go ahead and take an actual read in from the Actron uh, in real time and then see how hot it actually gets okay so that's just on the seat it's pretty hot let's see so it's sitting at 91 okay this was obviously a hotter day than when i tried it the other time okay so like 15 minutes kill shot going it's pretty much what i've been using to test it with was at about 140. All right, so this is after about an hour, a uh, little longer than 45 minutes, I thought. And uh, it's never really gotten any hotter than this. But yeah, that that's pretty hot to the touch. That can burn you for sure. And by the way, have you guys seen this? Yeah. Okay, so 155 degrees, that's, that's pretty substantial. But the thing about the J10 ASB is that it's actually a class AB amplifier. Now, that being said, class AB amplifiers usually run a little bit hotter. And the way that that is designed, that whole outside panel out there is actually what is called a heat sink, meaning there are transistors that are crucial to the circuit that are connected directly to the other side of that plate. Pretty much in a nutshell, how transistors work is they dissipate a lot of heat and that heat has to go somewhere. That's why all of the car stereo amplifiers that you see are always a big giant, pretty much essentially aluminum shell that is an entire heat sink. Now, being such a compact design, they don't really have that luxury to, you know, make a big heat sink and compact at the same time, you know, it just really doesn't work. Another thing that I mentioned before and that I should probably mention again is that that was with nothing at all covering the amplifier. Now, imagine if you were to actually have, you know, a bunch of gym bag full of clothes or whatever actually covering the amplifier that 155 is only going to do nothing but go up. I know it's hard to keep them in well-ventilated places. I, I get it. But you got to try to figure out somewhere where it's going to be maybe not ventilated, but definitely not closed off and not covered. Now, that being said, how much heat is, you know, being lost from the point where the transistor is all the way, you know, to where I'm able to take a reading? I wouldn't think it would be that substantial, but it's something to think about. But again, where do we go from here? Well, I actually thought of the greatest idea in the world that I think I should have patented. Darn, you're going to take my patent. Don't, 
don't take my patent. Well, let's go out to the bench and I will show you the easiest, cheapest way how to fix that and make this amp run a lot cooler. Okay, so here's the trusty TBX that is actually out here in the shop. Uh, let's just pretend like, you know, the speaker's down there, uh, that's flat up there. You know, this is pretty much the same type of layout for the amplifier as the JSB. This is a brand new tank that I just got done cycling. These are catfish and those are oxalotls. And this is a heat sink that I actually nabbed out of uh, one of the old receivers that I have. I always take out of old electronics uh, a lot of the components. And one of my favorite things are heat sinks. I always grab these. And uh, for this actual application. But I do have linked down in the description um, pretty much a little set, a little kit that is going to do the exact same thing as this is going to do here. And what it is, is it's a couple of heat sinks, but what is most importantly in there, there is a thermally conductive adhesive, pretty much an epoxy glue that allows heat to travel through it very, very efficiently. Now, what you would do is, what I would do, what I'm going to do, I don't have any of the paste, but for demonstration purposes, we'll just pretend. So what I would do would be to put a lot of adhesive on there, and then basically, just put that right there like that and uh, let it dry. And I promise you that right there, because this whole thing is a heat sink. You want as much surface area covered as possible and you want it to transfer heat as much as you can. Now don't use JB Weld or anything like that. That is gonna be a thermal barrier. It's not gonna be thermally conductive. So pretty much, yeah, check out the description or hey, try to go find uh, an old receiver or something and uh, steal parts out of it. Make sure to uh, stick around and come back because I'm going to actually do this and test it, you know, take a before and after. But I think that will give us a better idea of if it actually works or not. So be sure to stick around for that. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, stick around. I got a lot more stuff coming up and a lot more things that I'm actually really excited about. If you have any questions, comments, whatever, put them down there in the comments and I will get to them as soon as I can. And uh, yeah, subscribe, like, all that. Thank you guys. Have a good one. We'll see you later.